Hey, welcome to Socialism for All. This file is being recorded for the September 2022 edition of Socialism for All, and it's an audiobook and discussion of Capitalism and Workers' Immigration by Lenin from 1913. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe, and consider supporting on Patreon at patreon.com slash socialism for all. There's a link to Patreon in the video description. So this piece was published in Zapravdu number 22, October 29, 1913, signed VI and published according to the Zapravdu text. The source is Lenin Collected Works, Progress Publishers, 1977, Moscow, Volume 19, translated by the late George Hanna, and it's in the public domain at the Lenin Internet Archive within the Marxists Internet Archive, Marxists.org. Thanks as usual to Marxists.org for hosting this and thousands of other free Marxist texts. Let's begin. Capitalism has given rise to a special form of migration of nations. The rapidly developing industrial countries, introducing machinery on a large scale and ousting the backward countries from the world market, raise wages at home above the average rate and thus attract workers from the backward countries. Hundreds of thousands of workers thus wander hundreds and thousands of versts. A verst was a Russian unit of measure about equivalent to a kilometer. Advanced capitalism drags them forcibly into its orbit, tears them out of the backwoods in which they live, makes them participants in the world historical movement, and brings them face to face with the powerful, united, international class of factory owners. There can be no doubt that dire poverty alone compels people to abandon their native land, and that the capitalists exploit the immigrant workers in the most shameless manner. But only reactionaries can shut their eyes to the progressive significance of this modern migration of nations. Emancipation from the yoke of capital is impossible without the further development of capitalism, and without the class struggle that is based on it. And it is into this struggle that capitalism is drawing the masses of the working people of the whole world, breaking down the musty, fusty habits of local life, breaking down national barriers and prejudices, uniting workers from all countries in huge factories and mines in America, Germany, and so forth. The United States heads the list of countries which imports workers. The following are the immigration figures for the U.S. 10 years from 1821 to 30, 99,000. From 1831 to 40, 496,000. From 1841 to 50, 1 1.6 million. From 1851 to 60, 2.5 million. From 1861 to 70, 2 million. From 1871 to 80, 2.3 million. From 1881 to 90, 4.7 million. From 1891 to 1900, 3.7 million. From 1901 to 1909, 7.2 million. The growth of immigration is enormous, and it continues to increase. During the five years 1905-09, to 09, the average number of immigrants entering the United States was over a million a year. It is interesting to note the change in the place of origin of those emigrating to America. Up to 1880, the so-called old immigration prevailed, that is, immigration from the old civilized countries such as Great Britain, Germany, and partly from Sweden. Even up to 1890, Great Britain and Germany provided more than half the total immigrants. From 1880 onwards, there was an incredibly rapid increase in what is called the new immigration from Eastern and Southern Europe, from Austria, Italy, and Russia. The number of people emigrating from these three countries to the United States was as follows. From 1871 to 80, 201,000. From 1881 to 90, 927,000. From 1891 to 1900, 1 1.8 million. And from 1901 to 1909, 5.1 million. Thus, the most backward countries in the old world, those that more than any other retain survivals of feudalism in every branch of social life, are, as it were, undergoing compulsory training in civilization. American capitalism is tearing millions of workers out of backward Eastern Europe, including Russia, which in 1891 to 1900 provided 594,000 immigrants, and in 1900 to 09, 1 1.4 million, out of their semi-feudal conditions, and is putting them in the ranks of the advanced, International Army of the Proletariat. Auerwitch, the author of an extremely illuminating book, Immigration and Labor, which appeared in English last year, makes some interesting observations. The number of people emigrating to America grew particularly after the 1905 revolution. 1905, 1 million. 1906, 1 1.2 million. 1907, 1.4 million. 1908 and 09, 1.9 million. Workers who had participated in various strikes in Russia introduced into the U.S. the bolder and more aggressive spirit 
of the mass strike. Russia is lagging farther and farther behind, losing some of her best workers to foreign countries. America is advancing more and more rapidly, taking the most vigorous and able-bodied sections of the working population of the whole world. Germany, which is more or less keeping pace with the U.S., is changing from a country which released workers into one that attracts them from foreign countries. The number of immigrants from Germany to America in the 10 years 1881 to 90 was 1.5 million, but in the nine years 1901 to 09, it dropped to 310,000. The number of foreign workers in Germany, however, was 695,000 in 1910 to 11 and 729,000 in 1911 to 12. Dividing these immigrants according to occupation and country of origin, we get the following. From Russia, 274,000 in agriculture, in industry, 34,000. Total, 308,000 from Russia. From Austria, 101,000 in agriculture and 162,000 in industry. Total, 263,000. From other countries, 22,000 in agriculture, 135,000 in industry. Total, 157,000. Overall total, 397,000 in agriculture, 331,000 in industry, 728,000 total. The more backward the country, the larger is the number of, quote, unskilled agricultural laborers that it supplies. The advanced nation sees, as it were, the best paid occupations for themselves and leave the semi-barbarian countries the worst paid occupations. Europe in general, meaning other countries in that chart, provided Germany with 157,000 workers, of whom more than eight-tenths, 135,000 out of 157,000, were industrial workers. Backward Austria provided only six-tenths, 162 out of 263,000, of the industrial workers. The most backward country of all, Russia, provided only one-tenth of the industrial workers, 34 out of 308,000. Thus, Russia is punished everywhere and in everything for her backwardness. But compared with the rest of the population, it's the workers of Russia who are more than any others bursting out of this state of backwardness and barbarism, more than any others combating these, quote, delightful features of their native land, and more closely than any others uniting with the workers of all countries into a single international force for emancipation. The bourgeoisie incites the workers of one nation against those of another in the endeavor to keep them disunited. Class-conscious workers, realizing that the breakdown of all the national barriers by capitalism is inevitable and progressive, are trying to help to enlighten and organize their fellow workers from the backward countries. That's the end of the audiobook. There's just a quick note. Other countries on the American continent besides the United States are also rapidly advancing. The number of immigrants entering the United States last year was about 250,000, Brazil about 170,000, and Canada over 200,000. Total, 620,000 for the year, said Lenin. So now we're living in an age in 2022 of Fortress Europe, Fortress America. There's a lot of capitalist-funded, right-wing, quote, populist or just fascist movements arising. They will try to pretend to mainstream themselves as just merely conservatives, but it's more than that. This is an age of crisis for capitalism, highly advanced Consolidated capitalism, which is to say imperialism, which goes through a process of fascization and becomes fascist. One of the components of this that is revealing itself in the current character of this worldwide trend is anti-immigrant sentiment. Now, there are other things such as anti-abortion and general anti-feminist sentiment, anti-LGBTQ+, which is to say, conversely, pro-patriarchy pro, quote, traditional gender roles, even though we're talking about gender roles that were created by capitalism. They're not actually traditional or natural or anything like that. Matriarchy is actually the natural state of humanity prior to class society, which we communists are seeking to abolish. And so there is this backward, highly reactionary fascist trend, which is anti-left, anti-socialist, anti-communist, anti-Marxist, whatever sort of synonym for that you want to use. Obviously, we Marxists know that there are differences between these things. However, you know, look at the Republican Party in the United States, for example. To them, literally everything that they don't like is communist. Democrats are communist, whatever. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's something to keep in mind when sort of analyzing this. But they all are explicitly anti-left. Some of them actually do uh, study Marxism in order to better combat it. Why? Because their purpose is to shore up capitalism. Now, as Lenin says... 
Class-conscious workers, realizing that the breakdown of all the national barriers by capitalism is inevitable and progressive, are trying to help to enlighten and organize their fellow workers from the backward countries. So there's a book out there by Walter Rodney, How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. So capitalists have realized that this sort of progress that capitalism does bring ultimately threatens to undermine capitalism itself. Why? Because capitalism is born out of feudalism. It ascends. At first, it's progressive. And as Lenin says, it breaks down national barriers. First, it creates nations. But then uh, after they've created the nation state to create a national market for the new capitalist class, well, eventually they saturate the home market. All of that is completely conquered and they have to turn outwards. And also increasing amounts of international trade occur and the national borders become actually barriers to capitalism. So this is why Lenin said that there is a centralizing trend. Capital tends to consolidate into larger and larger enterprises over time. And these nation states, which capitalism created to assist it on the way up, then capitalism has to strike this balance between not uh, causing the conditions for its own downfall, but trying to tread water sort of at its peak. It's trying to sustain its glory days. The problem is it has to revert to fascism to try to do this because it's inherently unstable. Fascism is born, it ascends, it lives, it dies. And advanced capitalism is global and the nation states, you know, that system is in many ways incompatible with it. There is an internationalism which emerges and, you know, as we see the cross-globe immigration and emigration of workers from this market to that market to sell their labor for wages and set up a life there and all that kind of stuff. This is increasingly a global society, and it's one created by capitalism. So fascism is basically the response to how do we keep all of the class exploitation, which enriches the capitalists, because it's a movement of and for capitalists, without capitalism advancing any further, which puts it more and more danger of socialist revolution. And the answer that they come up with is basically intense repression of class conscious workers movements combined with destruction of the means of production. So they're trying to just hover indefinitely in this area to basically avoid death for this phase of class society, capitalism. And a certain kind of brash nationalism is part of that formula. Again, fascism is always global at the end of the day. So really, this is another kind of hypocrisy where the capitalists create an order that they themselves don't really have to live in, don't really have to abide by its rules, etc. But again, it's part of this increasing cage that they try to put workers in to avoid the effects of the contradictions of the system that they're pushing ever more forcefully. So the antidote to this is proletarian revolution fueled by proletarian internationalism. That's our basis. Capitalism has gone as far as it can go. The future of capitalism is more fascism until the time that workers abolish it and move on into socialism. We can only do that on an internationalist basis, not by buying into anti-immigrant, nationalist, nativist sentiments as pushed by the would-be friends of the workers in the right-wing populist fascist coalitions. All right, that's the end of my comments. What do you think? Leave a question or comment in the comment section below. We'll continue the discussion there as always. Otherwise, thanks for listening. And thanks to the current patrons whose names are on the screen. We don't run ads on this channel, so that support is vital. If you'd like to kick in a few bucks, that would be great. It can be recurring, or you can just kick in a few bucks and call it a day. Every donation is encouraging. They're also materially helpful. So much appreciated. Patreon.com slash Socialism for All. Also, engagement counts. Like, share, subscribe. All of that helps YouTube to recommend this content to more people. So even if you're not directly sharing it on your social media for other people to see, or if you don't have a large social media account, at least do that stuff. Leave a comment, even if it's thanks, good video, whatever, and you will be helping YouTube to reach out to other people and share this material. Finally, remember the struggle happens in the real world, so look around for orgs, parties, unions, whether it's labor union, community union, tenant unions, or again, political parties, something like that in your area, even if you're just joining on a state or national level, it's time to get organized. The capitalists are, and increasingly the fascists are as well. So we have to get organized as well. It's not just about electing people 
if you can run candidates, then that's fine. But it's about organizing, networking, increasing class consciousness, and creating a force that can be mobilized for workers' actions. Remember, if we don't build these parties, nobody will. Socialism is history that the workers write, so get to it. All right, thanks again, and we will see you in the next video.